and we're going to talk about electric circuits. And our goal is to understand electric circuits in terms of the microscopic models that we've been dealing with and the, uh, the terms of the fields, the electric fields that we've been, been dealing with. And let's just remind you of some things you already know about models of matter. You know that uh, we're going to be dealing with conductors again. Okay, because we're going to be talking about charge flow through conductors. And so we know that uh, conductors have a mobile electron C that kind of fills the space, okay, superimposed on top of positively charged ionic cores that each, each atom gives up an electron to the mobile electron C. Okay, and so the electron C kind of fills the space. And then if you are able to have an electric field inside a conductor, then you can cause these charges to flow. And we could run a little demo program that shows this. So the plus charges are the static, immobile ionic cores. And the negative charges, they represent the electrons that are free to move. You apply an electric field in, in uh, this direction. And the force on an electron is then going to be in the opposite direction. So that'll cause it to, to accelerate. Now, we sh shows here the charge is kind of moving at a constant rate, which is what eventually happens, or on average happens. We've seen the proportionality between what we call the drift speed and the electric field. OK, so drift speed of mobile electrons. This is the electric field. And then this is called the electron mobility. How easy the, or how easily the electrons can move through a particular conductor given a particular electric field. It's a property of the material, okay? And in our model, you know, this is kind of the average motion, but in our model, we're, we're saying that the electrons will accelerate and pick up speed until they eventually collide with one of these positive ionic cores and lose all their energy and give some of the kinetic energy to the ionic cores, uh, which then start to vibrate around. We interpret that as uh, a temperature increase, as, as thermal energy. And so if you were plotting the velocity versus time for a, a mobile electron, you'd see it accelerate to the electric field and then eventually collide and lose all its energy and accelerate and lose all its energy and accelerate and then collide and lose all its energy. So on average, you have an average constant speed to these mobile electrons. And so the drift speed is directly proportional to the applied electric field. Okay. Uh, another thing we've seen is that the electron current, little i is, what's the electron current again? That's what per second? Not coulombs per second, that's the conventional current. It, this is the just number of electrons per second, right? Little i is the number of electrons per second. And little i can be related to the drift speed. And the formula we had worked out was n a times v. What was little n? Electron density. Okay, little n is the electron density. And that's the number of electrons per volume, right, per cubic meter. Okay, so there's some certain number of electrons, free electrons, mobile electrons, per cubic meter in a particular metal. Again, that's a property of the material, just like the mobility. And then you have A, which is the, what's A? Area, what area? Cross-sectional area, cross-sectional area of the wire through which the electrons are traveling, okay? 
And you can see how the units work out, right? Electrons per meter cube times meters squared uh, times meters per second gives you electrons per second. Okay, so and this is okay. So this is something we've seen before, and we're going to be using it quite a bit in uh, in this chapter. And then conventional current, capital I, is just the charge of the electron times that electron current. So this is coulombs per second or amps, right? Okay. All right. Um, so if we have a situation like this, we can create one by just taking battery or two batteries in series here, and I'm going to connect them to just a little light bulb, and I connect the circuit, and the light bulb lights up. Okay. Pretty exciting. And we have, so we have a current, right? We have a current running through the light bulb, and, and the light bulb, by lighting up, shows exactly this sort of collisions we were talking about, right? Electrons flowing through the filament, uh, colliding with the mobile cores. They give their energy, uh, that kinetic energy goes to heating up these ionic, or excuse me, ionic cores, heating up these ionic cores, and that energy is given off as light, right? It gets hot. You can touch it and feel it get hot. Okay. So here's an example of a simple circuit with uh, a current. Okay. So somehow we're able to create a situation where we have an electric field uh, inside these wires. Okay. These are insulated copper wires that keep driving these these mobile electrons. Is this an equilibrium situation? Is this static equilibrium? No. What, what's what's true in static equilibrium in a, in a metal? The electrons have stopped moving, right? So clearly the electrons are moving here, right? So this isn't an, uh, a case where we have equilibrium. So we can, therefore, have an electric field uh, inside the metal, okay? And this is what some, okay, so let's, this is something that's called, we're going to use the term a steady state. Okay, so, so let, in fact, let's contrast. We have equilibrium versus steady state. So in equilibrium, by definition, the drift speed of the electrons is zero. Okay, in the steady state, it's not equal to zero. Okay, and it's not changing over time. Not changing with time. Okay, so it's steady. Whatever the now. Not necessarily, well, as we'll see, the speed might not necessarily be the same everywhere in the circuit, but at a given point, the speed stays constant in time, okay? Uh, and therefore, right, little i also is equal to zero, and the electric field, or net electric field inside the wire is equal to zero when we have an equilibrium situation but they're not zero when we have uh, a steady state. And again, they're not varying in time. Okay. And there's one other, we should just introduce this now. There's one other situation which we'll later talk about, which is something called a, a transient, which is there's got to be an instant. When I connect the circuit together, it goes from... If I disconnect the circuit, what's that? Steady state or equilibrium? That's equilibrium, right? Because the electric field has got to be equal to zero because there's no current. There's no mobile charge movement. Uh, you can tell that just from the light bulb not lighting up. Okay. So we're at a point here where the net electric field inside the wires is zero, no motion. We're at equilibrium. And then I connect the circuit, and all of a sudden we're in a steady state. So there must be some... Uh, point or some brief amount of time, and it's really brief, uh, at least in this particular situation, where we go from zero to non-zero. So a transient we'll talk about as a situation where the charges are moving, and that motion is changing with time. OK? 
Okay, and you can say the same thing about the, the current and the electric field. Okay, they're not zero, but they are changing with time. That's the key idea behind a transient. We'll talk more about transients as we go along. But I want to focus on a steady state situation for right now and see if we can learn something about it. And let's ask a question here. And in fact, let's back up a little bit. If I have a uh, if I have a battery, and this is the positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative terminal of the battery, what direction is the, are the electrons moving at A? That's anybody. That's not even bothered to pull. What directions are the electrons going to be moving at A? How do they move? And they move toward the negative or away from the negative? They would move away from the negative, right? So at, at this point, uh, we'll talk more about, again, later, how to model a battery. But we can think of this as electrons come out of the negative terminal of the battery. Okay, so they're moving down and to the right at A. So that would be direction 4. And then at B, they would be moving that way, right? And then they flow back to the positive terminal of the battery. So that's the direction of... The drift speed, okay, so at location A, number four would be the direction of the drift speed and the direction of the electron current, right? So if I have, so let's just draw that again. Negative, positive terminal of the battery. Here's the light bulb. Okay, so electrons, V bar is that way, and little i is that way, and then V bar is that way, little i, same direction. Conventional current, it flows what direction? Other way, right? Capital I would be flowing the other way by definition. Okay. So let's think about the electron current. We know we have an electron current that's electrons are flowing into this light bulb at location A, and then they're flowing out of the light bulb at location B. And we have a steady state. What can we say about the electron current, the rate of electrons per second at A? versus at location B. Is the current at A bigger than at B? Is the electron current at A equal to the electron current at B? Or is the electron current at A less than the electron current at B? And we have some disagreement. We have a little over half of us saying that the two currents are equal. Some of us are saying that, well, light bulbs bright, right? So clearly, you got to have more current at A than you have at B, right? Because somehow that current's being used up some way to give off the light. Well, let's think about that. We have a certain number of electrons per second flowing into the light bulb. So a certain number of electrons move in every second. And then some smaller number of electrons come out every second. Where are the electrons going? They turn into energy. So electrons annihilate with uh, protons or positrons or something in the, uh, in the filament, and they disintegrate and turn into energy. Is that what's going on? <laughs> right, okay. What, what do we, okay. So we either, we, if, if electrons are going away, we either have to have a nuclear reaction going on, right? Where electrons are annihilating and turning in, and just turning into photons, or if they're just directly just going away, if electrons are just actually leaving the system or being sort of directly turned into photons, then what would happen? Yeah, yeah. What conservation of of what? Okay, conserv Okay, so one is conservation of mass, right? We got to have conservation of of mass and energy, and the other conservation law we have is. Charge, yeah, conservation of charge, right? Because if electrons were just leaving, this thing would be getting more positive and more positive and more positive, right? And I don't think that's happening. You could probably test that if you had a little piece of, well, you had a little piece of tape or a little uh, shred of paper and put it near here and you would see it eventually get repelled or repelled and repelled, right? Or if it were positively charged or attracted if it were neutral or negatively charged. But I'll assert to you that it stays neutral. You can try it out yourself if you like. Uh, okay, so we got a problem. The electrons can't just go away. 
they can't just accumulate. If the only other option is they would accumulate, right? If they come in and stop, then we got another problem because, you know, you're having a, a continuous charge buildup. So the only possible option is that the amount of charge flowing in has got to be equal to the amount of charge flowing out every single second. That really stems from this idea of conservation of charge plus the idea of we have a steady state. Nothing's changing with time. Okay, so the, the, the rate of charge flow stays the same. Uh, and this is something called the node rule. But it's really just an expression of conservation of charge plus the fact that we're in a steady state. Okay. You could think of this as sort of a conservation of current rule in that sense. And the node rule simply says that the in the steady state, the current in to has to be equal to a current out of a node. What's a node? Well, a node is just a point or any specific spot in the circuit. So if I choose this light bulb as the node that I'm interested in, then the current flo the current flowing into that node, the electrons per second flowing into that node, have got to be equal to the number of electrons per second flowing out of that node at any given time. Okay. The number of electrons flowing out of the battery per second has got to be equal to the number of electrons flowing into the battery at any given time. The number of electrons uh, flowing into point B has to be equal to the number flowing out of point B at any given time. Okay, so that's a node is just a spot in the circuit. And uh, we'll, as we'll deal with more complicated circuits later, but it also has consequences if you have a more complicated circuit where the wires actually branch apart. So for example, if you have a, a battery here and some circuit that looks like this, and it comes back together maybe over here. So here is the flow of electrons coming out of the battery. We call that I1. And then here's a, a spot where the you have two branches in the circuit, and there's I2 and I three and so by the node rule what has to be true? Okay, they just split. What has to be true about the relationship between these three currents? I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, right? Pick that as the node, the total number of electrons flowing in has got to be equal to the total number of electrons flowing out per second. I2 plus I3 is the total current out, I1 is the total current in. Okay. So so it works in more complicated situations as well. Now, those of you, I mean, it's natural to think that uh, the current in is greater than the current out. This is actually a, a, a common uh, first guess. And it's, and it's kind of a natural one to make because you think that something is being used up, right? The light bulb's giving off light. Well, it's not the current that's being used up. What is being used up or in some sense? Okay, energy, right? Where energy is being given off in the form of light, what's what's delivering the energy to the battery, right? The battery is 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 is, is a source of energy here. The battery is doing work, and we will we'll quantify that at, um, next time or or late or next week. But uh, so you know, it's we're not getting something for nothing. Okay, we are we are converting energy stored in the battery into light that's being given off, but it's not the current that's being used up. Okay.